virtually everyone on the earth, regardless of religion or nationality, recognize that there is some form of battle raging in the world around us between the forces of good and evil. A colossal struggle between light and darkness, truth and error, oppression and freedom, right and wrong, and ultimately, life and death. What is the story behind this glaring paradox? Many religions, including the Bible, teach that beyond the three-dimensional veil of our physical world we see, there's another very real spiritual world we cannot see. In this unseen realm ever about us, we see a titanic battle raging between the supreme righteous hero and the ultimate evil villain. The big question is, who are these primary players? And how, where, and when did this cosmic crisis begin? This is the greatest mystery of the ages and the most amazing true story that has ever been told. This crisis now involves every person on Earth. Yes, every person. After the war in heaven, Satan and his fallen angels were banished from the courts of glory. For a time, the devil and his demons roamed through the universe, unsuccessfully searching for worlds to sympathize with them in the rebellion. In the meantime, the heart of God keenly felt the vacuum created by the loss of Lucifer and his angels. So the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit returned to their favorite work, the marvelous work of creation. They decided to make a new world filled with a myriad of amazing and diverse creatures to love. This new world would be unique because the principal creatures would be made in God's own image. To them, the Lord would also give dominion of this new planet we now know as Earth. In the beginning, God created the Earth. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. What an awesome sight to behold. God forming a brand new world, our planet, Earth. And with every wonderful day of the creation, something new and spectacular burst upon the scene. On the third day, God spoke and beautiful lush vegetation sprang into existence. Plants of all color, shapes, and sizes. On the fifth day, the world was filled with stunning exotic creatures that could either soar through the heavens or glide freely through the blue waters. And some could do both. The sixth day saw the introduction of a vast and diverse multitude of land animals. From the giant elephant to the tiny chipmunk, each found a home in the new planet and a place to live in harmony with the rest of creation. And also on the sixth day, God created man. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. What a tremendous honor 
to be made in the likeness of God, to be a free-thinking, self-governing individual. In the beginning, man was not aware of his nakedness. This was likely because prior to sin, he was clothed with glory and light. God also created the ideal companion for Adam, his beautiful wife, Eve. The joyful pair were placed in a magnificent garden, flawlessly designed to enhance their happiness. To Adam and Eve and the other creatures of the earth, was also given the divine privilege of procreating in their own image. It was the intention of God that the human race would retain dominion over this perfect paradise forever. Eternally happy and healthy, they'd work with the floor of God's garden while enjoying the affection and companionship of all the creatures under their care. The environment our first parents experienced was vastly different from the world today. Roses had no thorns, insects did not bite or sting, and lions and lambs would gently frolic together. But the greatest blessing was that humans lived in perfect harmony with their maker. Every seventh day, Adam and Eve would rest from their pleasant labor and hold open blissful communion with their visiting creator. It was a splendid, wonderful world and this happy estate would have continued through eternity if only our first parents had proved faithful in one simple test. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Because the adversary had contaminated the universe with his rebellion, the Lord saw the need of a simple test of love and loyalty. Remember, the good angels had just seen a third of their friends cast out of heaven during the war. How could they be assured these new humans would not side with Lucifer and cause more trouble? So the Lord placed a unique tree in the Garden of Eden, a tree whose fruit was not to be eaten on pain of death. Passing this simple test of obedience would demonstrate Adam and Eve's allegiance to God and faith in his word. Even more, it was a test of love. This is why Jesus said in John 14, if you love me, keep my commandments. But someone else learned of this test of faith and he determined to use it to his advantage. Satan was very jealous of the happy humans who were now enjoying the blessed life that he had lost. Their happy existence stood in stark contrast to his own, which was now full of guilt, sin, and misery. In his brooding resentment and anger, he was not content to leave the innocent pair alone, for sin always seeks to drag others down with it. And so one day, as Eve was engaged in her pleasant work, she found herself alone and perilously close to the forbidden tree. It was then that Satan saw his opportunity. Using a mesmerizing serpent as his medium, the fallen angel called to Eve from the tree and thought to engage her in conversation. His charming words were carefully calculated to instill a distrust of God. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Tragically, as Eve listened to the smooth, silky voice of the tempter, she began to entertain doubts about God's word. The serpent enticed her with the promise of enhanced power and wisdom. She found this appealing. After all, 
the fruit had apparently given the snake the ability to speak. What other powers might it give her? And so even though she had just met the serpent, she trusted his word above God who had created her and provided her paradise home. So Eve ate the forbidden fruit and soon after persuaded her husband to do the same. Adam could have chosen to remain loyal to God, but he put his love for his wife above his love for God. As our first parents gave their allegiance to the enemy, the dominion of the earth was claimed by Satan. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey? No one can serve two masters. This world would now become the ultimate battlefield between good and evil, and the hearts of every man and woman the prize. Little did Adam and Eve realize it at the time, but their one moment of distrust and defiance would open the floodgates of suffering on millions of people for thousands of years. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. Our first parents soon began to face the terrible results of their sin. In their holy state, Adam and Eve glowed with robes of glory. After they sinned, these natural robes of light faded and they became mortified by a sense of their nakedness. Shame and fear replaced their joy and peace, and they sought to cover their nakedness with leaves. They now also found themselves under the constant influence of the devil. Giving in to temptation had weakened their very natures, and Satan had gained a new power over humanity. People could no longer resist the temptations of the devil in their own strength. Lastly, and most terrifying, they found themselves living under a looming death sentence. God had warned them that disobedience would bring death. They had already experienced the spiritual death. How long until they suffered physical death as well? At this point, their future held nothing but darkness and despair. So he drove out the man, and he placed cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Just as sin caused the fallen angels to be expelled from their heavenly home, so now, because of disobedience, Adam and Eve were driven from their garden home in paradise. Everything around them was quickly changing, and humankind found itself susceptible to heartache, disease, and finally death. Even the animals and plants were infected by the terrible curse Thorns and thistles now appeared on trees and flowers, and animals that had formerly been gentle began to kill and devour one another. The worst result was sin had separated humanity from God. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. At creation, Adam and Eve were given the honor of speaking with the angels and even God the Son face to face. But God is so perfectly pure and holy that no evil can exist in his presence. Now that the first humans had sinned, God withdrew his holy presence from them for their own protection. Sin had burned a cataract on the soul of man so he could no longer see the spiritual dimension. From this time on, direct communication with heaven would be limited. As all of these curses fell upon Adam and Eve, the Lord's heart was deeply moved with tender compassion. The law that they had broken could not be altered to save them, for it's as sacred and unchanging as God himself. The Lord knew there was only one way that man could be redeemed. So a plan was revealed, born from the very heart of God, a plan to save man from his appointment with eternal death and to restore everything that had been lost through sin. It would be an amazing endeavor in its depth, scope, and power, but it was a plan that would also involve an enormous sacrifice.
God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. The scriptures clearly teach in Romans 6, 23, that the wages for sin are death. The broken law demanded the life of the sinner, and there was only one in all the universe who could qualify as a substitute for humanity. The creator alone could pay the debt of his creatures by standing in their place. So Jesus Christ, the Son of God, willingly agreed to leave the purity, glory, and safety of heaven. He would come to die in man's behalf on this wicked renegade planet. He would be born as an innocent, helpless baby, endure a life of sorrow and shame, and yet live a perfect and victorious life. Finally, he would die a humiliating death in order to stand as a substitute for fallen humanity. Through his sacrifice, mankind might amazingly be offered one more chance at eternal life. His blood would provide the ransom for the world that had been kidnapped by Satan. This wonderful plan of redemption was graphically illustrated in the system of animal sacrifices ordained by God after the fall of man. The Lord had warned Adam and Eve they would die the day they ate the forbidden fruit. So how was it that they remained alive? The Bible tells us that soon after their sin, God provided clothing for them in the form of animal skins. It's worthy of noting that Revelation refers to Jesus Christ as the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. This indicates that a lamb was slain that very day to prevent their immediate death. By faith in this sacrifice, their death sentence was symbolically transferred from themselves to the innocent creature. The lamb, of course, being a representation of Jesus. And so, a ray of hope was provided in a seemingly dark and hopeless situation. Through repentance and faith in the blood of the coming Messiah, any human could once again become a child of God. But in spite of this wonderful plan, for the time being, Satan would still have dominion of the earth, and life in this world would not be easy. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Many naturally wonder why a loving and all-powerful God permits sorrow and suffering in our world today. But it's clear from Genesis that God never intended for us to know the pain and trials of this life. As it came from God's hand, the earth was a wonderful paradise it was the sin of Adam and Eve that gave Satan the right to claim control of this planet. Because of their tragic choice, the devil and his minions gained the power to tempt and torment humans, inflicting sickness, pain, and suffering. Perhaps a better question would be, why doesn't Satan have full control of humanity? The answer is Jesus Christ. You may already realize that Jesus' death on the cross provided each of us the opportunity to be saved. But in reality, it did much more than that. When the Savior offered his life to redeem the earth, that act placed restrictions on Satan's control over humanity. Satan could not force our will, and his power to harm us would be limited. Christ's sacrifice also brought us a time of probation where we can see for ourselves the difference between God's government and Satan's and then decide who we would serve. Ultimately, because of Jesus' selfless sacrifice, Satan's kingdom will come to an end, and the earth will one day be returned to man more wonderful than it was at the beginning. So when Adam and Eve began their lives as exiles from paradise, they still had hope. God had provided the skins of sacrificed animals to cover their nakedness, but more importantly, he had promised the blood of the Lamb of God to cover their sin if they accepted Christ and repented. One big question remained. Would people accept God's generous gift? 
how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? The amazing story that you've just heard is true, and it affects you. Because of Satan's desire to be God, and Adam and Eve's distrust and disobedience to God, we all find ourselves in a perilous situation. On one hand, mankind has been greatly favored by God with a second chance to regain our Eden home. On the other, if we fail to take advantage of this wonderful opportunity, we become slaves to Satan and will ultimately be destroyed when God cleanses the universe of sin. Friends, there is no better time to make your decision for Jesus than right now. None of us know how long we might have to live on this earth. Our lives can end instantly. Jesus has shown great interest in your well-being, and his love for you moved him to provide a way to escape from the coming destruction. He just asks you to accept him, to repent of your sins. Through Christ, you can find pardon and receive a new heart to become like him in character. The sobering news is that Satan is moving in every possible way to keep you from accepting God's gift of salvation. Through the busyness of life, the love of money, or some other fascinating distraction, he works to keep you occupied with anything but what really matters most, your eternal salvation. For you see, the reality of the situation is that if you don't choose Jesus, you will have by default chosen Satan. Although Adam and Eve's terrible choice brought untold death and misery, you now have a chance to make a better decision. God is offering you a peace that satisfies the deepest longing in your soul and a joy that will lift you above the trials of this world. The yearning desire of God's heart is for you to be saved and to be with him in paradise. But the only one who can keep you out of heaven is you. Imagine how tragic it would be if you were needlessly to reject this precious gift. You can choose today to accept the salvation that God has promised. In fact, this very moment, you can accept everlasting life through Jesus Christ. Can I invite you to join me right now in a simple prayer accepting his wonderful offer? Please repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you now and humbly ask for your forgiveness. Lord, I confess that I am a sinner and I've broken your holy law. I realize that the penalty for sin is death. I believe that Jesus Christ suffered and died on the cross to take the punishment for all of my sins. I believe Jesus rose from the dead and I accept him as my personal savior. From this moment forward, I give you my heart and trust you to be the Lord of my life. Please forgive all of my sins and send your spirit to help me do your will. I thank you for your great love and accept your gift of eternal life. And I pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. I'm actually really surprised. They just told me here in the studio, we're gonna give this away. What is it? It's an incredible DVD we took two years in producing, explaining why is there evil in the world? Cosmic conflict. If God is so loving, then why would he make a devil? Or did he? If God is so powerful, why doesn't he destroy the devil? If God is good, then why do bad things happen to good people? All of these questions and much more are answered in this beautifully illustrated with three-dimensional graphics DVD called The Cosmic Conflict. We'll send it to you free for asking. To get your free copy, text your name, address, and requested free offer details to 0458-222-444 or visit amazingfacts.com.au. And you can email us at freegifts at amazingfacts.com.au. And when you get your free resource, make sure and read it and then share it with someone else because God's message is our mission. Are you wondering what lies ahead in human history or what recent world events are harbingers of the end? 
Are you ready for the coming crisis? Landmarks of Prophecy offers clear answers to your most pressing questions. Presented by Pastor Doug Batchelor, Landmarks of Prophecy is a contemporary video Bible study adventure designed for today's audiences, presenting the landmark themes of the Bible in a bright and compelling way, helping you understand the Bible better and giving you knowledge to face the future with confidence. Landmarks of Prophecy contains over 30 hours of exciting video presentations on six DVDs, plus bonus question and answer sessions, giving you keen insight into what lies next in human history. If you'd like practical tools to help you thrive and survive in the here and now, get Landmarks of Prophecy. Start your epic Bible study adventure with Landmarks of Prophecy today by calling 7 1041 or by visiting amazingfacts.com.au. Did you know that Noah was present at the birth of Abraham? Okay, maybe he wasn't in the room, but he was alive and probably telling stories about his floating zoo. From the creation of the world to the last day events of Revelation, BibleHistory.com is a free resource where you can explore major Bible events and characters, enhance your knowledge of the Bible, and draw closer to God's Word. Go deeper. Visit the amazing Bible timeline at BibleHistory.com.